Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, Tamim. How are you? Is I'm audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. So in the previous class, uh, today we just keep a 45 minute class today, okay? Just to make you okay. Okay. So uh may I know that in the previous class that we, we did the question that we did in the previous class. Did you practice that one in the home at home? Uh not yet, sir, because yesterday, right after the class ended, uh, we had to go somewhere for a function. So I wasn't getting time. Okay. Because you need to understood this for and that for better understanding, at least you need to practice two or three sums daily. Okay. Yes, sir. So do it, please. Do this question. Try this question. Calculate the mole fraction of the benzene of the solution containing 30% of mass by uh, in carbon tetrachloride. Right. Okay. Is the screen visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, starting. Yes, sir. Just tell me the biography of the question. Um, that to find the mole fraction of benzene, the solution containing thirty percent uh, by mass and carbon tetrachloride. Yeah. Which formula you are going to use here? So we have to find the molar mass, right? Yeah. Mole fraction. The formula, you need to calculate the mole fraction mole of benzene. Fraction. Benzene is C6S6, okay? Yes. Sir. So how did you calculate? It, it is saying that 30%. So it means out of 100, 100 grams of solution, okay? Out of 100 grams, so 100 gram of solution, it has 30 gram of benzene, benzene, and 70 gram water. Okay, one, uh, sorry, it is in carbon tetrachloride, so it is in carbon tetrachloride. So 70 gram, by mass in carbon tetrachloride means it is 70 gram carbon tetrachloride, you need CCL4. Okay, so it's easy, calculate it. I will calculate more fraction of benzene. So it will be equals to number of moles of benzene divided by number of moles of benzene plus number of moles of carbon tetrachloride. A.
right? What you will put here? How will you calculate NB? Tell me fast. It's 30 divided by 78 at 0 0.38. And here? And that is 70 divided by 154. 70 divided by 1? Why? What is the mass of? What the, well, first of all, what is the mass of uh, benzene is C, C6? S6 is 78? Yes, sir. Is 72. And what is the mass of carbon tetrachloride? Uh, CCL4 is uh, 154. Uh, 154. 71 to the 142 plus 12, 154. Very good. So, how will you do this one? I'm still calculating, so I'm dividing uh, the 70 divided by 1. Okay, try. Yes, Zero point four five. Zero point four five. Four five. Zero point four five. Okay. So whatever the value comes, if you do the same correct calculation, you will get the correct answer. Okay. Yes, sir. Got it. Now, in the previous class, we were discussing that uh, about the Rolls law. What does the Rolls law state? Uh, is a, uh... We studied this one in the previous class. What does the Rolls law state? For a solution of volatile liquids, the partial yes. pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction present in the solution. Okay. Yes. We did this derivation. Let's do the derivation again. Okay. What was that? According to Raoult's law, what, what does it say? That the partial pressure exerted by a gas is directly proportional to, sorry, by a liquid is directly proportional to the mole fraction of that component. Okay. Now it is, it has a unit ATM. It has a unit. No, it is a unit less you wanted it, so you cannot equate it. So you have to write it that PA will be equals to PA naught. Means this is a pure solvent at pure, pure state. Okay, it is in the solution. It is the partial pressure in the solution. Partial pressure in the solution. Okay, and it is the partial pressure. Partial pressure in the in the pure form. Pure form, okay? Pure state, and it is not in the solution. Into XA, mole fraction of A. Okay, got it? Yes, sir. Now, similarly, partial pressure, when the two liquids we are talking about, uh, the two liquids A and B, 
okay and they are exerting the pressure so the partial pressure of b in the in the solution partial pressure pressure of b of b in the solution will be solution in vapor phase in vapor phase will be equals to p a not b it is the partial pressure in the pure state okay into x now p total will be equals to p total will be equals to p a plus p b this is according to dalton's law according to dalton's okay now what is p total p total you will get at p what p a p a not into x a plus p b will p b not into x b okay you understood now a is a is solute and b is solvent okay b is uh, b is solute and a is a is solvent we will write here x a as solvent and b as x b as solute okay so you can write it like this way p a b into x b plus p a not into x a okay now what you can write it p b into x b x b can be written as in terms of a how can you write x b tell me in terms of b how can you write xb in terms of a you can write 1 minus xb can you write it like this way tamim are you doing something is i audible to you hello tamim is i audible to you hello Hello. Just just a minute. Are you speaking, Tamim? Are you there? Hello. network issue hello sir can you hear me yeah i can hear you are you facing network issue uh no sir my tabs charge got over and it shut down automatically okay now it is p total p total will be equals to is it visible to your screen 
Yes, sir. Now you can write here P A naught into X X A naught. Okay. So this this thing that this mole fractions of B can be written as one minus X A. Okay. Got it. So when you yes, when you multiply this one, what you will get? You will get this one. You will get P B naught. Okay, minus X B into X A plus A naught into X A. Okay, so you can take the X H X A. So this is X B, and you can take the X A is common from it. So when you take the excess common, so you can write plus and you will bring A here, A minus B. And then you can write XA. B, B I wrote here just because of the minus sign. Okay. So what you learn here that P total can be written means if you know that if you know the partial pressure of two sub substance and the mole fraction of only one component. Okay. Either the solute or the solvent, the P total can be calculated. Okay. P total can be calculated. Okay. So here we have some points over it from the NCRT that what we conclude from this Dalton's theory. Okay. Here are some following terms. These are the terms. What is this terms? First term is simple that the total vapor pressure over a solution can be rated with the mole fraction of only one component. Okay. Means if it is only we know only the one component here we have X A, okay X A and X B we have X A and X B but if only the X A is given or if only the X B is given so we can write it. You understood? Yes, sir. So if it is P total, it can be also written as in terms of P A plus here you will write P B minus P A, P B minus P A minus P A into into x here it is x a now it is x p so it can be written like this also in terms of x so if it is p a m mole fraction of a then we have b here we have a minus b and we will get this value if we have b here then we have p a here and this b minus a just like this value so we can write if we know the mole fraction of the two component sorry partial pressure of the two component in their in their pure state in their pure state okay so we can write it we can write it in terms of any single component in the mole fraction of only one component okay second is the total vapor pressure of a solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of the component this we're going to understood what does the word say linearly the mole fraction varies so note note these two points first okay so Here is one more important point from the NCRT that depending on the vapor pressures of the pure component, depending on the vapor pressure of the pure components, like one and two, here it is a vapor pressure of the pure component. This is the vapor pressure. This is the vapor pressure of the pure component. Okay, means PA and PB, PA naught and PB naught is given to you. Now, depending on the vapor pressure of the pure component one and two, the total vapor pressure over the solution decreases with increase in the mole fraction of the component one. Okay. If you increase this value, if you increase this value, that whatever the difference comes here, the, oh, if the mole fraction of the component one is increasing, then, then the overall value will increase. Okay. So if you are increasing only the component of the one, then the P total will increase. Okay. Yes. So depending on the vapor pressure of the pure component 1 and 2, the total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with increase in the mole fraction of the value of the component 1. Let me explain you this one more in more detail with the help of graph. Just note it down and when you're done, please note, let me know. Okay.
Done. Done. Okay. Yes. I'm just making a graph here. Just drawing a graph here. Okay. Just concentrate over this graph from the NCRT. Now you know that if we are having this formula that P A. Okay. That P total is equals to P A plus P B. And that is equals to P total is equals to P A naught into A naught into X A plus P A naught P B naught into X B. Okay. This is the formula. Yes. Got it. If you keep this value zero, then this whole value will become zero. Yes. Okay. Then we will say that then P total will be equals to if, if, if X B is equals to zero, then we will say that P total will be equals to P A naught into X A. P total will be equals to P A naught into X A. And if it is zero, then this value will be, you know that X A plus X B is equals to one. And you know that if it is zero, then X B, X A will be equals to one. Are you getting? And if this value is equals yes. to one, then you can write P total is equals to P A naught. Okay. So here we are assuming in this reaction that we are just having the two graph. This is this, this graph in this axis or this axis represent the pressure. This axis represent the pressure and this axis represent the mole fraction. Mole fraction. Okay. Here this, this like we initially in the normal graphs, we have one points like from this value, we have zero. Okay. And as we keep on going, this value increases. Okay. But this graph is a this graph is a combination of two graphs in which for x1 here this for x2 it is 0 and for x1 it is 1. I mean this point has two values. When x1 is equals to 1 at this point, then x2 will be 0. Because you know that if x1 x1 plus x2, x1 plus x2 will always be equals to 1. Okay. So if I'm saying that or x a plus x b or you can write here one or two okay x a one plus x two is equals to one you know this one so if i'm just putting any value zero like for example if i'm putting this value zero then x one will be equals to one automatically so this point is here when we are having this value as this okay so we are assuming that x two a here is point is zero and we are just considering this point as one so let this here at this point x two is equals to one okay here x two is zero and here x2 is 1. The mole fraction of 2 is 1. Okay. So here at this point, x a will be equals to 0. Sorry, x1 will be equals to 0. Or you can take one or two values here for better understanding because we have used a or b. So you can assume a or b. Okay. Just assume that, just assume here that here x b is equals to 0. Then x a will be equals to how much? 1. And here, if here x b is equals to 1, if we have my maximum value, then x a will be equals to zero. You understood this top this instrument or not? Tell me. Did you get yes, this sir. point? Sure. Yes, sir. Hundred percent sure. Okay. So here, let these these are two points. Okay. Now, assuming that, assuming that we are just making this graph, let p a is greater than p b. P a naught is greater than p b. Okay. P a naught is greater than pb we are just assuming that the partial pressure of a is greater than than b at the pure state okay now you know that p total will be equals to p total we are just assuming this pressure values okay and we are just having this value here also now assume that if i'm saying that pa is greater than pb pa is greater than pb this we have taken this terms and condition we have taken this terms and condition now you know that we know that P total, P total is equals to P A, P A naught into X A plus P A, P B naught into X B. Okay. Yes, now, if I'm just taking this value as zero, this zero. So you will say that P total will be equals to P A naught into X A. Okay. And if I'm just saying that X A is equals to one, so you will say that P total here will be equals to PA naught. Okay. So we just assume that here is this value that PA we are having the greater value. Okay. And you are just, you are just, you consider that here is the PA, PA naught. 
So this will be at maximum value here. Yes, sir. Okay. This will be at the greater value. Okay, maximum value. So when we are having in this value, when we when we put the value as what we are doing here, just concentrate that what we are doing here, we are just putting the value of XB as zero and XA as one. So we will get that P total is equals to P A naught. And we just mark this point here. Okay, now coming to this point here, this point, this point. At this point, what will be the pressure? What is the pressure? What is the total pressure? So you will find that when you put X B as one and X as zero in this equation, what you will find? You will find that P total is equals to P A naught B. Okay. What it will be? It will be P total will be equals to P A naught B. Okay. You understood? Yes, sir. So at this point, what you are going to get the value? You will get some value here because we are assuming that P A is greater than P B naught. Let me explain you one more time here. What you are going to get? You will get P total is equals to P A naught P A naught. P A naught into X A plus P B naught into X B. Now what you are putting the value, you put this value zero. So this whole value will become zero and you put this value as one. So you will get P total is equals to P A, A naught B. Okay. Got it. So for this yeah. value, for this value, you are having this value. And for this value, you are having this value. Okay. Here you will find some value. Okay. Let, because we are just assuming that P B is here. Okay, here. Got it? PB is here. Yes. And we will assume that at this point we are assuming this one. So if you draw the graph of this, one, what you will find? You will find that you just make this graph like this way. You will find that PB. You will find this way. And you will find, you will make this graph, you will make this one. Okay. You just jo join this point from here to here and from here to here. So when you join this point, you will find that this line segment that is representing this way, this will be considered as P total is equals to P A plus P B naught. P A, A plus P B, okay. So this is the graph for the this is the graph for the P A and this is the graph for P B. Got it? Yes, sir. So draw this one, please. Draw the you can change the digits. Or you can draw this one because we have assumed that P is greater than PB. So draw this graph. You done this one? Noted? No, sir. I'm still drawing. Under it. Start doing from here. Actually, this is this is this one. Okay. From here, you have to start.
You done? Done, sir. Now coming to the point further. Now case one, when we are just we 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 were just discussing in the previous class that if a non-volatile solute is added, okay, just concentrate here. Non-volatile. If we are just assuming that if a non non-volatile if a non-volatile solute is added okay if a non-volatile solute is added then what is going to happen you will find that initially the mole fraction of a is a when the pure state it will be only having a particles a particles but when a non-volatile solute is added when a non-volatile solute is added then it is having both both the particles of this one a and b both okay they are having both the both both of them so you will assume here that that it is a pure solvent and the, in the pure solvent okay only only the pure solvent particles are there so they will exert more pressure but even non volatile solute is a non volatile means that does not evaporate so the so the pressure exerted by this particle will be less will be less now because the surface area decreases are you getting this one so this when a non volatile solute is added this is known as relative lowering of vapor pressure means the relatively there will be a lowering of vapor pressure okay so we know that Pressure exerted by A will be directly proportional to the mole fraction of A. This you know. Okay. And you know that PA it will be equals to PA naught into XA. You know this one. Okay. You understood. And you know that yes, in the sir. pure state, in the pure state, it is always greater than PA naught in A state is always greater than PA. It, it is in the pure state. The pressure exerted in vapor pressure exerted in the pure state is always greater than the uh, exerted in the when a non volatile solute is added. Now it is this pressure will decrease. Okay, so it is in the solution. Got it? So you know that yes. PA in not will be always greater than PA. So the change, change in pressure, what you will see that change in the pressure will be equals to PA not minus PA. Will it be the change? Initial, initial means the highest minus final, it will be a change. This is in the solution. This is another. Now, if I ask you, if I write it, write it in the in the form of pressure. So what you will write here? PA naught is equals to you can write it PA naught minus, and this you can write as PA naught into XA. Small fraction of A. Can you write it like this way? Yes, sir. Now you can write it change in vapor pressure will be equals to PA naught. Take this common, you can write it 1 minus XA. When you take the common as PA naught, you can write it like this way. Can you write yes. it like this way? Now, if I bring this down, so what you will write? You will write change in the vapor pressure, change in the lowering, relative lowering vapor pressure will be equals to PA naught, it is in the pure state, will be equals to 1 minus XA. Okay. And 1 minus XA is the is is P A naught upon P A. Okay. Sorry, not P A naught. This is change in the relative lowering pressure will be equals to P A naught. And that would be equals to 1 minus X A means X P. You can write it X P. Mole fraction of B because 1 minus X A is X P. Okay. So we can simply say here that we can simply say here that. Okay. We can simply say here that P A. Okay. What is this? P A naught means change in the change in the uh, or we can say that relative lowering vapor of vapor pressure. It is the lowering of vapor pressure. It is the lowering lowering of vapor pressure only. Means delta P <coughs> represent lowering of vapor pressure. Lowering of vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. Okay. And delta P naught upon P A naught is known as relative lowering of vapor pressure. Relative, relative lowering of vapor pressure. 
of vapor pressure. Okay, so that would be equals to P A naught, and you can write it like this way. Okay, and you can write it P A naught is like this, like P A P A naught minus P A upon P A naught is equals to X P. This is mole fraction of P. A. Okay. So, noted down this derivation, we will discuss the numerical in the next class for this one. Where is that? So, you can say okay. that relative, relative lowering of vapor pressure depends on the mole fraction of solute only. It does not depend on the mole yes. fractions of solvent, okay? Yes, sir. So, note it down and then when you're done, please write it. Okay, sir. This is the change, change, change or lowering of vapor pressure. Done? Oh, we got you. The last. Okay, noted.